Hello my friends, how are you? I hope you are fine. In today's video, we'll summarize the making of the modern world. By the respected writer Vaclav Smile. Let's go without wasting time. Vaclav Smile on the making of the trendy world. I just picked up the book Making the Trendy World. Matter and Disposal of Materials. By Vaclav Smile, who was on Bill Gates' list of the best books I've read in 2014. The first two pages of the introduction contain this amazingly compact summary of much of what the roots of progress is all about, the story of humanity the evolution of our species, prehistoric shift from foraging to permanent agriculture, the increase and fall of the traditional, middle and early modern civilizations, economic progress within the past two centuries, mechanization of agriculture, diversification and automation of business protection, Huge increases in energy consumption. Disseminating new communication and data networks. And impressive gains in quality of life they might not are possible without the increasingly complex and complicated use of materials. Human ingenuity has transformed these materials first into simple clothing, tools, weapons and shelters, then into more elaborate dwellings, religious and funeral structures, pure metals and alloys, and in recent generations into extensive industrial and transportation infrastructures, megacities, synthetic and composites, and into pillars and enablers of an electronic world. New. This physical progression wasn't a linear progression, but of two unequal periods. The primary was the very slow rise that extended from prehistory to the beginnings of rapid economic modernization, that is, until the 18th century in most of Europe and until the 19th century within the U.S., Canada and Japan, and even the last half. From the 20th century in geographical region, the center east and China. The overwhelming majority of individuals lived in pre-modern societies with only limited quantities from simple possessions that they made themselves or that were produced through artisanal work as unique pieces or in small batches, while the products were made in larger quantities be it metal objects, bricks and burnt tiles, or drinking cups are too expensive to have on an oversized scale. The most reason for this limited mastery of materials was the restrictions of energy. For thousands of years, our ability to extract, process and transport vital substances and minerals was limited by the capabilities of the most motors, human and animal muscles, with the assistance of straightforward mechanical devices and by only slowly improving the capabilities of the three ancient mechanical main motors, sails, water wheels and windmills. Only the conversion of energy in fossil fuels into inexpensive and universally diffusible mechanical energy for mechanical main engines, first by external combustion of coal to power steam engines, and later by combustion of liquids and gases to energize gasoline and diesel engines and, later, Gas turbines were created a fundamental change that ushered within the second, rapidly rising, phase of fabric consumption, an era further accelerated by the generation of electricity and also the emergence of business chemical blends that produce an infinite kind of compounds starting from fertilizers to plastics and medicines. The world thus became divided between the rich minority who controlled massive flows of materials and embodied them in long-term structures further as endurable and transitory consumer products and also the low-income majority whose tangible possessions made up a many low portion of the fabric stocks and flows within the rich world. Now the list of products that almost all Americans claim they can't live without includes cars, microwave ovens, home computers, dishwashers, dryers, and residential air con Taylor et al. 2006 and that they have forgotten what number of those modern possessions are. It's because only 50 years ago many of them were rare or non-existent. In 1960, but 20 percent of all American households had a dishwasher, clothes dryer, or air con, and therefore the first color televisions had just appeared, and there have been no microwaves, VCRS computers, or phones, portable, or SUV. In contrast, 
those without landowners in low-income countries who are lucky enough to have a home of their own sleep in a little earthen brick building or poorly constructed wooden structure with little to no interior sort of a bed, some cooking utensils, and a few drained clothes. Readers who don't have a concrete picture of this massive physical division should observe Peter Menzel's physical world. A world family portrait, where families from 30 countries are photographed before of their residences amidst all their household possessions. Menzel, 1995. This particular material disparity has its general counterpart within the gap between the vast and dear infrastructure of the rich world, transportation networks, functioning cities, agriculture that produces large food surpluses, and largely automated manufacturing and its insufficient and failed counterparts in poor countries. Thanks for watching. Hope you benefited from this video. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and click on like.